Hi everyone, my name is Michelle and I'm Mama Loves You GB here on Flosstube and this is my Flossmas Advent, day 19, so 19th of December. Welcome to the morning briefing, uh, although it's Saturday so some of you might not have your normal routine on a Saturday morning so I hope you can catch up with me at some point during the day. Um, I've had a really good day today, so this is Friday for me. Um, as you know I film the night before. Uh, I had a lovely... Um, like a Zoom meeting with all my colleagues this morning. Secret Santa is really, really big in our school amongst the staff and usually it involves lots of subterfuge and pupils delivering presents to amongst the staff from one another and then there's lots of clues and lots of silly games have to be done and puzzles and songs and all that sort of thing. Um, but obviously this year was a little bit different so we had to hand in our gifts um, and it could be several days worth of gifts with all our clues before we left last Friday and then they were quarantined and then they were given out on Monday and everyone's been um, unwrapping them as we've been homeschooling through the week and then putting putting the results and pictures and things like that onto Google Classroom so it's been really good fun so today was the big uh, the big reveal for everybody um, so that was really really nice and the other really nice thing that I've had today um, as a real treat is I have found that Christina from Wild Iris Naps has done her first floss tube so um, welcome to the floss tube community Christina you did a fab job and it was so lovely to see you and to see all of your um, projects that you've been working on, all of your exchanges that you've done and also those fantastic samplers and to see the original samplers and hear a bit more about the history so um, I hope it won't be too long before floss tube number two is up so uh, if you haven't found that then go along to while iris naps and i will link it down below but this time it will be her floss tube as well as her website so fantastic i've got all the usual things for you today and i'm going to get started straight away and i was actually looking through my freebie chart folder to pick out something for today and i couldn't believe that i've managed to get all the way to the 19th of december and not shown a freebie from with thy needle and thread so I thought that needs to be corrected straight away. And this is one of the ones that I really, really like. I've not stitched it yet, but it's definitely something that I would like to stitch. And it's the Mayday Sampler. Now, I'll put a picture of it up here because the way it's printed out, it's not gonna be as easy to show you um, what it looks like. So I'm just gonna hold up the two pages so you can get an idea of what it's like. And basically it's a big basket with um, these beautiful turquoise birds on it and all the alphabet and a lovely sort of sawtooth effect border, um, zigzag border, whatever you want to call it. So that is the Mayday sampler. So as always I'll put the link down below and you can go and grab that and save that maybe for a bit later on in the year but that's a beautiful springtime one. If you want to get a few spring things on the go then um, that's definitely one to, to put on your list. My thread advent, I can't wait for thread advent. I did get a little bit of haul today, which I'll show you at the end, which I mentioned I knew was coming yesterday, but I'll show you them at the end, but I wanna see what's in my thread advent today. So we are all the way back here. Which one's this? Old red paint. I've had old red paint before and I'm actually using old red paint currently in a Threadworks. No, it's not a Threadworks. Um, drawn thread. Oh dear. The drawn thread pocket that I'm making. Um, so, perhaps if I show it to you, doesn't it? It's that sort of really dark red brown colour. So, very happy with that one. I'm not sure what's going on with my hair today. It's a bit all over the place. Um, a lot of people have left comments saying that they, they like the colour of my hair and they, they like my hair, which is very nice to hear. Thank you very much. But I can't wait to get it cut um, over or when I go back home. I still have the same hairdresser that I had when I was 14. And um, I've always known that I was going to go grey really early and I started going grey before I was 30, well before I was 30 in fact, and I used to have super super long dark hair and I always said that when it started to get really really grey I would just cut it off, I would just cut it all off and let it go 
and that's what I did actually just before I was 40 I cut all my hair off and I had it really really short pixie cut and um, I had that up until lockdown actually and I'd sort of yeah the grey I'd let the, all the grey come through because it's mostly there's only a tiny little bit of colour left in this now this is mostly my my grey hair and um, so it was all short just before lockdown and then obviously with lockdown couldn't couldn't get it cut at all and um, it goes when it's growing out it goes really kind of bouffant um, and I look a bit like uh, Claire Bolden who is the um, horse racing presenter um, which is fine Claire Bolding's lovely but she has a tendency to look a bit like Gordon Ramsay as well so when my hair gets when my short hair was getting really long and grown out I looked a bit like Gordon Ramsay and um, so I'd, I'd love to have it cut short again but with the fact that we just can't get to the hairdressers and as I said my hairdresser is back in in Gloucestershire so I can get there even less often I think I'm just gonna leave it as it is and just have a bit more shape put in it and have the kind of earmuff bits taken taken back because it grows really really thick my hair so um anyway that was a little interlude that I'm sure you didn't need to know <laughs> but as I say I've not really spoken to many people today again so um you're getting everything that's my thread advent. My previous finishes are again probably two more recent ones. The first one, and I had such grand plans with this. And do you know what? If I think I think if I put all the monthly um, stitches that I've done with the intention of doing the entire year's worth together, I might have a, an entire year's worth, but all from different sets. So this is the October. From, it's October Snapshot by Sandra Workman and I bought the PDF from Fat Quarter Shop I think and I've also got November and I've got December as well and I haven't stitched either of them yet <laughs> so like I said and I've got May and June and uh, March April May and June from another set so I think I'm getting there I'm gonna have a whole year's worth at some point but just not the same set so um, I think maybe we'd be better off with seasons. Maybe if I did seasons, I'd only need to do four. But there we go. So that's what it looks like. It's stitched on 32 count vintage country mocker by Zweigart. And just in this little, it, this, this works out to be like six by four inches. So this is a five by seven frame. So the idea is that I was gonna switch them out each month. Um, and that's still an idea. I'd still like to do that, but I think I'm gonna to have to go back and buy January and February with a with the hope of maybe getting a few of them done. <laughs> Never mind, you know what they say about the road road to hell? Let's pay with good intentions. But we like to have plans, don't we? Plans make us happy. I think we're all planners at heart. And I'm already thinking about my um, planning video for 2021. I don't think I'm gonna do another whip parade because I did one quite recently and um, lots of them are still there really so um, but I think I am going to do a planning video and before the end of this advent as well I'm going to remind you about the um, stitch along that I'm hosting starting on January the 1st which is the EF sampler but I'll do that another another time the other previous finish I've got is this little hanging pillow which is one of those ones where the thread colour is quite close to the fabric but it's an absolutely beautiful thread colour and I think it's called kelp but it's I know it's definitely a Gloriana and it is in it's called harvest time and it is in this Blackbird Designs book so I should have shown you, it's just got a couple of a couple of rusty bells, because we like a rusty bell, don't we? And a bit of cording that I made, and just a plain green back. And it's because it's a hanging pillow, it is only just stuffed enough just to give it a bit of a a bit of shape. It's only got a little bit of fibre fill just to give it its shape and hold it out. It's really that's not very helpful, is it if I get that book in the way? It's really not overfilled at all. And so this is the pattern I can find it there we go 
and this is actually the reason that I bought this book because I've seen this stitched I think Carol Saltbox Stitcher has got it stitched on her wall in fact I'm, I'm more than certain she's got it stitched on her wall somewhere but I think she's shown it to us a couple of times I've always loved this alphabet and the thread let me just check I'll give me the right information Water Lilies Kelp so it was sorry it wasn't Gloriana it was a Water Lilies Kelp and that was a beautiful beautiful thread to um, to stitch with I've got one little finish to show you as well um, I decided the other day that I was going to stitch this up which I bought from Chris at the Nimble Thimble and it's only taken a couple of days and there it is it's on 32 count vintage grey by Zweigart and what I've done is I'm just going to show you a couple of little things that I do because I know this is going to be a pillow finish I think I'm going to put a loop on top of it to make it a hanging pillow but I know it's going to be a pillow finish so I'm going to show you a couple of little things that I do if I know it's going to be a pillow finish and it's got buttons I will always iron the interfacing on before before I put hang in there before I put the buttons on because obviously you need to iron the interfacing on when it's flat and these little um, polymer clay buttons or whatever it is they're made out of you don't want to be ironing on the top of those one because you might damage the button and two because it's not going to be flat so I always iron my interfacing on before I put the buttons on um, or the same with any beads or anything like that now the other thing that I did this time because I am lazy <laughs> is can you see it's got all those little bits of snowflakes and stuff I knew that if I carried my threads when I was doing those snowflakes that you would be able to see it but not if you iron the interfacing on first <laughs> how lazy is that so I ironed the interfacing on first and then I went back and put those little um, those little doodads on so if you've got anything that you know you're going to make into a pillow that you know you're going to put interfacing on the back of then that's a little cheat for you because it's a bit lazy the other thing I wanted to tell you about is about when I make a pillow now you have to be a little bit careful when you're making a pillow and I've seen a few people um, do this on floss tube and then point out the error of their ways you need to really leave a good gap so on this pillow I'm probably going to leave like three quarters of an inch because if you cut it really close when you fill it that's going to bend back and you're not going to be able to see it you need to leave a really good margin so that your design sits on the top of the pillow and doesn't sort of curl round um, ah, I've still got this sat here so can you see here as I said there's probably three quarters of an inch there between the line and my seam so that when you stuff it, you can still see the edge of the pillow on the top, or the edge of the design on the top of the pillow. If I'd have left less of a gap than that, then my edge would have been right down here, and it would have pulled the whole design round. So you don't get to see as much of it. So I will leave, as I said, a good three quarters of an inch all round there before I make that into a little hanging pillow and the other thing that I was just going to show you before I go is I'd said I bought the threads for A Gentleman's Daughter by Plum Street Samplers I'll put a picture of it up here because I was keen to start that and they came today and they are some lovely colours now I'm not sure that I've got them all um, and I probably wouldn't have bought if there's a black I would have, wouldn't have bought the black because I'm going to use silks for you I've got a hank of black silk which is a really nice soft black um, I wouldn't have bought anything that's white because I've got a hank of white and I wouldn't have bought anything that would be a creamy colour because I've got a hank of cream as well so all the others uh, including the blue one that I showed you yesterday so Merlot 
hickory sticks. Ruby slippers, look at that. Pine needles. Nature trail. Persimmon. And no doubt there's probably a couple there, as I said, that they were out of stock of, but I'll either see if I can get them when the time comes or I'll just substitute them for something, um, something similar-ish. And, I can't believe I forgot, most important thing that came. Now I'm a teacher, so you'll understand this. Peakside Needleworks pen. Gotta love a pen, especially a freebie pen. So I shall be popping that into my pencil case and uh, using that at school. So thank you very much. And I will see you again tomorrow as we draw ever closer to the big ho ho ho. Stay classy, Stitches.